Today I'm going to review Vault of Horror. It has all the things that make life worth leaving. The Vault of Horror. Rated R. Vault of Horror came out in 1973 and is an Amicus anthology film. It's the sixth of seven that Amicus did and is a sort of follow-on from Tales from the Crypt from 1972. Vault of Horror also goes under three other titles. The Vault of Horror, Further Tales from the Crypt and Tales from the Crypt Part 2. And it's based on the old AC horror comics. It runs 83 minutes... It was directed by Roy Ward Baker, written by Milton Sabosky, and music by Douglas Gumley. This is the only film of the seven that Peter Cushion doesn't star in. The stories are called Midnight Mess, which featured in Tales from the Crypt, issue 35, The Night Job, which featured in Shock Suspense Stories, issue 1, This Trickle Kill You, from Tales from the Crypt, issue 33, Bargaining Death from Tales from the Crypt, issue 28, and Drawn and Quartered from Tales from the Crypt, issue 26. The film also has an introduction story where five strangers meet in a lift. The film stars Terry Thomas, Kurt Jurgens, Tom Baker, Dawn Adams, Daniel Melliott, Daniel Massey, Mike Pratt and Arthur Mullard. So what I'll do in this review is I'll go through the stories, give you my marks, what I think of each individual story, and then an overall mark for the film. So the film starts off with these five men who meet up in this lift, but the lift takes them further down and into this room. And in that room, they discuss nightmares that they've all had. And it has a twist ending, that they're actually dead, and they have to keep retelling the stories. It's actually not one of the best of the Lincoln stories for these anthology films. It's one of the weakest, I think. So I'll give the Lincoln story just four out of ten. Dreams are much more frightening than this. At least mine are. However, the five stories are good. The first one's called Midnight Mess. And it's about this guy who's killing people to get an inheritance. So he's like a human monster, but he actually makes vampires in this little village. He kills his sister, he stabs her in the heart. And yet she comes back as a vampire, which is a bit illogical. But there's a great scene where he's in a restaurant and he's having these different meals and they keep serving him blood. And the waiter asks him, how's your clots? And there's a clever scene where there's like a mirror in the restaurant. And they reveal it to see if he's human or not. And the vampires don't have reflections. And there's a cut scene where he's upside down and they've got this little tap in his neck and the, the pouring blood out from the tap. That scene was cut a bit, but it's fully uncut on the blue rear. So I thought that was a good story to start the film off and I'd give that one an 8 out of 10. <laughs> the second story is one of my favourites, The Neat Job. Terry Thomas is brilliant in this. He's one of them people who everything has to be in its place. He gets married to this woman and he keeps bollocking her if she doesn't have everything exactly how he wants it. And she loses her head with him at the end and puts a hammer through his head. Quite gory, the ending, where there's bits of his body in little jars. So I thought that was a brilliant story. I'd give that one a 9 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phil, was that his dick and bollocks in them jars? I don't know, Bones. It happened that fast. I couldn't tell what was in the jars. The third story's good as well. This trickle kill you. Stars Kurt Jurgens, and he watches this woman doing a rope trick. Cool, Phil. She'll go get my rope stiff any day. <laughs> Bones, man, stop being so rude. And he asks this beautiful woman to bring go to his apartment to show his wife this rope trick. But it's to kill her so he can get the rope trick. And there's a brilliant eerie scene where his wife climbs up the rope. And when she gets to the top of the rope, she says something and starts to scream. And then she vanishes. 
It doesn't show what she says though. And I, I thought that was a, a good touch that. Not revealing what she's screaming at. And I like the bit where there's blood on the sailing as well. So I thought that was one of the best scenes. Now to tell I'd give that story an eight. Fourth story is called Bargaining Death, and this is more of a whimsical kind of storyline. It's just about a guy who's trying to get his insurance money by pretending he's dead, so they bury him in the ground. But his accomplice buggers off, so he's, he's, he's not going to dig him up. However, ironically, a grave digger comes hunting for bodies for these two students, body snatching dead bodies from graves. He digs them up, played by Arthur Mullard. And he's that frightened he kills them. So this star is probably the weakest of the five, but it, it's still all right. I'd give it a seven out of ten. My grave. Buried alive. However, the final story is called Drawn and Quartered. That stars Tom Baker and Denno Melliot. It's a little bit like the picture of Doreen Greer. Tom Baker's character can draw these pictures. And he can get his revenge on these other guys who've diddled them out of money. And he can destroy the painting in some way and kill off the person who he's painted. Hey, Phil! Is Tom Baker trying to be like fucking Ralph Harris? No bones, his paintings aren't that bad. There's a really gory scene where this guy loses his hands. I thought that was really gory. And I like the bit where he puts a red dot on Denham Elliott's picture. And he's got a gun and at Tom. And he ends up shooting himself in the head where Tom's put the red dot. However, it has a twist ending where Tom's put a portrait of himself safe inside this safe. However, it gets destroyed and he ends up getting killed. So I thought that was a great story. Uh, it could have made a good film in its own right, that one. So out of 10, I'd give that one top marks. 10 out of 10. See? So I really enjoyed this film, however it's not a patch on the previous film, Tales from the Crypt. That and From Beyond the Grave are my two favourite Amicus anthology films. But it's still a good film. Uh, all five stories are good, there isn't a bad one. And I think the Tom Baker one's the best of the five. Like all these anthology films, it has a sinister atmosphere to it that Amicus was great at doing. However, Peter Cushion's a miss. He's in all the other anthology films that Amicus did, but he's not in this one. However, this does give other actors who don't usually star in horror films a chance to be in this film. Like a more unusual cast than usual. So overall, I thought this was a really entertaining film that speeds along at 83 minutes. That's partly because it's different stories. So out of 10, overall, I'll give this film an 8. 8 out of 10. So did you think Bones and you like it? Excellent film, Phil. Top marks. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye. and begin covering the canvas. All we're looking for is just a nice...